Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. Welcome back to the third and final example for Division One. Uh, ex standard example problems found in PDB. This is example 3.3 and this in this example we're going to be studying a nozzle to shell welded assembly joint and, and this is an interesting problem because the nozzle is much thicker than the actual shell so how do you how do you handle that? Well we, we've got procedures for that. I'm going to walk you through uh, every step so you com com hopefully will completely you know, grasp this, the concept and, and take it and move on with it. So we want to determine if the impact testing is required for a nozzle assembly, if it's comprised of an integral, um, of an integral reinforced nozzle on a standard shell. So this is what we're looking for. So let's, let's go back and take a look at a summary table of all of the all of the variables. As always, I prefer to use a table. So we have uh, to, to organize everything so everything is well organized and well understood. And, and I always reference the codes, the applicable codes, so that it's, it's very, very clear where we're heading. So our material, once again, like the other ones is, you know, A516 grade 70N, you know, we're, we're on a cylindrical shell. Our, our nominal thickness is uh, 1.8125 inches or 46 millimeters. It's just like the, the previous one, except we were analyzing a head. And the corrosion allowance, the, the, the inspection, the category of the, of the weld is well understood. And the weld efficiency is known, design pressure, and the design temperature it's, it's fairly hot it's approaching 150 degrees centigrade and and here is our, our allowable and our mdmt like design um, allowable stresses okay so let's let's talk about the nozzle itself well the nozzle is, is, is called a set-in nozzle and the material is sa105 and you're probably seeing where this is going to head to, but there's a reason why the ASME has this example, so sort of just lets you see more what's going on. So the outside diameter of the nozzle is, is uh, 150. The wall thickness is shown. The allowable stresses are shown. Okay, now we're ready. Let's continue. Like the other two examples, um, we always start off with UG20F, and that's for the, the, the five different kinds of exceptions, exemptions for the, um, um, before we get into the detailed calculations. Okay, so the first one there shown is number one, and it's, the, the P, it's a P1 or P2 material, correct? Uh, but it does not pass the thickness requirements because if it's, you know, in our case, it's a curve D, you know, we can't exceed, you know, 25 millimeters or an inch or where we got it, we have to do this. So the hydrostatic or pneumatic pressure testing, um, you know, we're going to be doing that as per, you know, pressure vessel code, right, in local authority. And uh, we'll be, design temperature would be between here and here. No, that's not the case either. The cyclical and thermal, we don't have any of this. It's not mentioned. There's no cyclical loading. So the only reasons why we have to proceed is because of thickness and the design temperature. Step one, where we classify the materials. And that's, you know, trying to follow the procedures very rigidly, which always helps. So we have a UCS 66 curve, and there's a different notes, um, but note four corresponds to curve D, as you can you can see in this table here. See the let me see. 
see the, the curve D. And so um, we're following that material right there. And of course, the next one is SA105, which is considered to be a curve B, a B material. So let's hold that thought and we'll, we're going to continue at the nozzle to shell welded assembly MDMT. So the governing thickness is step two. So the governing thickness is equal to the nominal thickness of the thickest joint. That's that's the basic rule. And we're going to ref there's a series of sketches they call it. It's in UCS 66.3, and we're going to be utilizing sketch number eight, which is shown here. So that's the assembly. It's an intricately reinforced welded connection. The thickness as we, uh, is 46 millimeters as was, was given earlier and the thickness of C is that and so A is here and C is here. Let's continue. Now going to step number three from the vessel information um, the requirements from the arbitrary we're looking for a minus 29 degrees centigrade or minus 20 Fahrenheit MDMT. That's our, our goal or lower. So uh, step four exemption curve refer to UCS 66. So here's our curve. We've got uh, 46 millimeter wall thickness and that's so we, we draw the line upwards and this is uh, for curve D, which we're modeling now the shell. Our MDMT is minus 21 degrees centigrade, basically. Now we continue. And I remind you that you, if you want the really exact answer, you want to use computer modeling. ASME has tables available, and this is, of course, available in metric and imperial. I should be saying that this is the figure 66M version, which is the metric version. So I'll continue. So here we go. So we're looking to look at the nozzle now. So the nozzle is a B, and we are sitting at 15 degrees centigrade. Okay, let's continue. to an, an ASME code interpretation, which uh, is pretty hard to find is section 8-10137. Uh, and basically it, it it's, sets the precedent. So when this is the condition when the nozzle thickness is greater than that of the shell or the head that you're working on, then you need to choose the, 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 the shell thickness which is basically the where the weld is. And so that's that's where it all comes from. And on where we go to step five, the stress reduction ratio. This ratio was introduced in detail in the uh, example two, the, the previous presentation, and we're going to work on it with regards to nozzles. So the stress ratio again is just a a, a ratio of the what the the um, the used stress is over the available stress. So how well, it's a it's a expression of how stressed the part is because ASME allows a, a credit for that uh, on the MDMT. So that's why you have TR, which is the required thickness, and then the nominal thickness. And of course, you need to subtract the the corrosion allowance or um, you know, that, those kind of considerations. And, and you can include things like mill tolerance as well. And um, from there, we just keep continuing and uh, with our forged nozzle. Example 3.3, .3, nozzle to shell welded assembly MDMT. So stress reduction ratio. Uh, we'll go through the calculation right now. We're going to look at the required thickness and then we'll finish it off. So basically, like the last time around, which was in examples one and two, we, we basically find the, um, the required thickness by the, by the a canned formula and uh, in, in the, the back. 
and in the, I'm sorry, in, within section eight, division one, and then we just test it for thin wall theory applies, and uh, they recommending using uh, this equation for the shells, and so we calculate that like we did last time, and we end up with required thickness of 34.3 millimeters, which is good because the the available is. For, um, 46. So, so the corroded rate is based on corroded radius, and you can see how we we basically determine that, and then the design pressure, and then the allowable stress because it's not a very hot part. Uh, we have that for available stress, and the the weld joint efficiency factor we use. Uh, 1.0, and uh, just a reminder, they never go below 0.8 for the weld joint efficiency. Then when you go ahead and you plug all the numbers in, your stress reduction is is basically 0.8. And that tells you that you don't really have a lot of room in there, the part, but you do get some credit. Jump to your stress reduction ratio. UCS 66.1 for, for steel, and we were using that um, that stress reduction ratio 0.8. We drop it here. We go across. We we until we touch our curve, and then we we find at the end of the day that our temperature reduction is 11 degrees centigrade or minus or, or so, excuse me 20 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to put all this together now. Step seven, adjust the temperature for the assembly. So we basically go back and we, from the from the charts with the stress, uh, the the original charts, and then we take we take into the temperature reduction, and then we we are up to four degrees centigrade. So since this value is warmer than the proposed MDMT impact testing is required. So what should we do? Spend a minute to just look at the implications of impact testing. I'm going to go to UG84. If you go to UG84, they've got a table, UG84.1, and there's one for metric and one for imperial. And I believe there's some tables as well listed there. So you have to find your um, the strength of your nozzle, which is your weakest part, and which is shown there. So you'll find that uh, the, the impact testing requirements are going to be 20, and that's because uh, where thickness is, you know, 46 millimeters, so we're at that part of the curve. So at the end of the day, you know, because our thickness is 46 millimeters, we're at you know 260 megapascals. We're we're basically sitting out with a 20 joules minimum uh, impact test requirements. Exhausted the options of, you know, the looking at the material curve and the stress ratio and the um, post weld heat treatment, you know, the joint geometry then what else do we have? Well, we have something else, and it's particularly useful with forgings. It's called the material substitution. And uh, it's actually buried in uh, UG480, sorry, UG84 reference through UCS66G, and it's called General Note C. Basically, it allows you to use SA350 material which is exempt from impact testing uh, to the, you know, to low temperatures, and so um, that's how we get away with that, and we are able to meet our customers' requirements. I hope you found this episode in, in interesting, and we'll continue on uh, for more videos about MDMT. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.